We're here in Texas with Dave from the Rally Ready Driving School. We're going to move on to our second lesson of our Rally Driving Fundamentals. Now if you haven't checked out our existing lesson in the series, make sure you do that before you watch this one. So Dave, lesson two, what have you got in store for me? Well we're going from the four wheel drive caged Subaru Rally car to the two wheel drive, front wheel drive Honda Civic here. Um, so the idea now is you've gotten comfortable using your left foot on the brakes. Now we're going to left foot brake through a corner on our skid pad. So the skid pad is essentially a never ending corner. Um, we're going to go out three laps at a time and get you comfortable using your left foot on the brakes and understand how to apply that left foot braking technique to get the car to rotate in a corner. So what we're going to do is we're essentially going to isolate the braking only. We're going to eliminate the steering and the throttle as variables by having a set throttle position and setting the steering wheel at about a half turn. So your hands will be back at that sort of nine and three position and you're going to be using the brakes to bring the car in and out. So the idea with this exercise is not that when we drive rally cars we don't use the throttle or the steering, we just use the brakes and hope for the best. It's that we really want to just get you comfortable understanding how powerful left foot braking is as a standalone tool. So as we isolate that input you'll see that you can get the car to move in and out on the course just by using your left foot on the brakes. Alright so for those watching at home how much pressure are we applying and when we apply that pressure what happens? Does this where we find that the, the nose of the car will tuck into the corner? Yeah so there's there's a whole lot of things happening with left foot braking. Um, you're in, a, in an open diff car like this you're sort of using it as a false limited slip since you're dragging brakes on all four corners you're preventing some of that wheel spin um, you're also sort of dragging the rear brakes which allows the back to slide and you're moving weight forward which also helps also helps that that turn in so um, most what we're doing here though is just managing that speed when you're in a front wheel drive car if you're flat on the gas pedal and you have no brakes and you turn into a corner on a loose surface the front is going to push right you're just going to understeer off the course so what we do is we start to add that throttle and until we find that understeer point and then you add throttle and brake together the brake sort of countering some of that throttle which brings the car back in so the idea here is understanding when you come into a corner in a rally car you turn you add the brake and then you can be dynamic with that brake pressure as much as you need to so just like in straight line braking we're going to press with our leg and then we're going to modulate by sort of modulating that just that big toe so you'll press the big toe down and you'll lift it back up just a little bit so it's a very fine amount of pressure rarely are you coming all the way on and off the pedal um, we like to talk about it as you are the ABS pump now, right? So you're responsible for, for uh, that, that modulation. And it's, again, small, small inputs, small adjustments make the magic work. Uh, can we talk about the line we're going to be taking? Obviously this is a continuous corner, so it's not like we're entering a corner and exiting it, but are we trying to stick right on the apex of the corner as we go through it? Yeah, so what we'll start by doing is have you sort of mid-corner a little bit towards the inside. We want to get you consistent and steady in that spot with the car. Once you get to where you can keep the car there the whole time with a little bit of modulating on the brakes, then we'll start to work on pushing the car out, bringing the car in, and I'll sort of give you pointers and cues and let you know when and where to push the car. What you should be able to do is put the car anywhere you want it on the course at any time. Uh, sounds like fun, a little bit to learn. Let's go have a, have a crack at it. Let's go for a rip. Okay, skid pad time. All right. So we're gonna go counterclockwise in this one. Like I was saying earlier, you basically can just look completely out the driver's side. So nice and easy at first, just start to find that understeer point without any left foot braking. Just get the car right there about a half turn. And try to keep your hands at nine and three, steady about a half turn of steering, right? Good, and then add throttle there. Don't move the steering, just keep adding throttle and then add brake on top of that. Good, eyes up over that mirror, all the way out, and then you should be flat in second gear with a ton of brake, a consistent brake. Ooh, that's right on that GoPro. So all the way flat in second gear and a ton of brake. Tons of brakes and hold it steady. Don't come all the way off, just keep it steady, all the way down. All the way, all the way. There you go. Good, lots of brake. Good, nice and steady. And then when you want to bring the car in, add a little bit more brake. We want the car to push out, off the brake a little bit. Good, and then add that brake back again. Good, yeah, okay. nice and steady. Nice and steady, no steering. There you go. So I like to keep the hands at nine and three no matter where the wheel is. There you go, just move them back to nine and three. There you go. And then steady on that brake. So a little bit less steering, you have a full turn of wheel in, which is too much, so you're in the scrub zone there. So you're not gonna get the understeer, there you go. So right about there, half to three quarters is perfect. Again, eyes way up that way, you should be looking all the way over. Nothing exists here, we can just black this screen out. Good, so as you come off the brake, let the car push out a little bit. So just come off the brakes, eyes up over there, eyes up over there, over the mirror. Off the brakes, let the car push out, looking over there. Back on the brakes, bring the car in. Good, and then modulate here as much as you need to to keep it steady. Good, nice. Good, consistent work with the steering. Eyes up there. All right, we're gonna go straight here, straight here, straight here. 
Good, and go cool it down. Woo! It's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a reprogram there. Definitely, it's a lot different to the four wheel drive. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you I think you get a lot more perspective of the amount of control that the brake gives you yeah. than you do with maybe the four wheel drive. Yeah, and that's kind of the issue. Is like in a rear wheel drive car, you're 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 always even if you use the brakes to sort of induce the slide and to run the car through the corner, you're still going to be throttle steering that little bit, right? You're you're, you're always going to have to modulate the throttle yeah. to keep the car where you want it. Um, and in all wheel drive, it's sort of a, a hybrid of the two. Sure. With with too much grip, frankly, for that exercise. Yeah. Open yeah. diff front wheel drive is great because it teaches you wow that front wheel drive with some left foot braking it'll really modulate the, just that front end. Yeah, yeah. So, again, neutralizing the understeer. And again, since most people who are looking at rallying are probably looking at a four-wheel drive or a front-wheel drive car, this is a great place to start because the corner dynamics for an entry are going to be really similar in a front-wheel drive versus a four-wheel drive. Yep. Um, the big difference, obviously, is going to be that power on the exit. So, getting the car into a corner, you're going to use this same technique, whether it's a front-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive. And even in a rear-wheel drive, the turn and brake is still how we're going to get the car into a corner. You're just going to be balancing it with a combination of brake and throttle sure. in a rear-wheel drive car. So, right. and the, again, one of the things that we haven't talked a whole lot about is sort of the latency, right? Just the, the time it takes to transition from throttle to brake. That's one of the big advantages with left foot braking. Is you don't that actually latency. have to get off the throttle and then that is that period where you're doing nothing and then get on the brake. That's it. And that, that latency period or that delay between coming off the throttle and transitioning to the brake, that's a lot of time. Yeah. If you just sit in your car and you go gas, brake, gas, brake, gas, brake, and then you go gas, brake, gas, brake, gas, brake, gas, brake with two feet, mm -hmm. you can see how much quicker obviously using two feet is. So even if you're in a rear wheel drive car and you're mid corner and you're, you know, you're on throttle and you're balancing it with that throttle, the ability to move that weight around really quickly with left foot brake still always going to play an advantage. Yeah. So um, the the aim is sort of like towards the end of that those laps there, it was more a case of let the car run wide with a little less braking and then good decent braking pressure and get it to tuck in and sort of the, the back come around. Yeah, and, a, and really get comfortable modulating that. Yeah, sure. And uh, initially I was using too much steering lock, so what did you say, half to three quarters of a turn? Yeah, is a half it, turn is, is kind of the sweet spot in most of these cars. Yeah, okay. Um, and any more than that, you're sort of going backwards. Yeah, okay. yeah, you're, you're just, you're again, that's where you start to rely too much on the steering and not enough on the brakes. So, okay. you know, even a little past to half turn is probably really the, the sweet spot as far as steering angle goes. Yeah. If we keep it a little bit less and we rely more on the brakes, it's, it's better for the sake of the exercise. Okay. All right, let's do this. Good, so same thing, steady with the steering, nice tidy hands. Try to keep them at nine and three. So the reason we want the hands at nine and three is just because visually it's easier to tell when you're moving them, yep. and it's easier to keep from doing what you're currently doing, which is moving your hands. So move them that nine and three, less steering. You just you see what's happening is you just keep slowly adding steering because that's the instinct. Yeah, sure. So you're you're like this on the brake, steady. You should I should never see your foot moving. You should just be moving that big toe. So not on off on off, just steady steady. You should just tiny tiny adjustments with that big toe. Little adjustments. Still too much, still coming all the way off there. You should always have the brakes a little bit sort of preloaded, even when you come off of them. Yep. There you go, Just let it run out a bit. Okay, we're gonna squeeze a lot of brake, bring it in here. Nice and steady, nice and steady, nice and steady, nice and steady, Whoa, off brake, let it push out. Whoa, not steady with that gas, there you go. So let it run a little bit wide, just slowly kind of taper the brake off, eyes up that way, eyes up that way. Let it start to run a little bit wider. Graze the camera out here on the outside, off the brake, let it run wide, off the brake, let it run wide. Eyes up, eyes up. Good, let it run wide, way out to the end. So off the brakes a lot more, let it run wider. Eyes up, eyes up, eyes up, eyes up. Keep your eyes up, over the mirror, over the mirror. Don't worry about anything over here. Eyes up that way. Good, and then start to slowly feed brake back in. Slowly feed the brake back in and start to tidy the car back up, bring it towards the inside. So feed brake in, eyes up. More brake, more brake, more brake. Start to run it in. Good. So what we're trying to do is really just neutral the steering out. You don't want to have an yeah. understeer, you don't want to have an oversteer, you want to just be able to neutrally trace the corner. Which is exactly what you're doing right now. So on this one, come off the brake here in just a second, accelerate that way. There you go, unwind the wheel and over the crest, good. I spent a lot of time in New Zealand, as you can see, based on my massively cambered corners. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, okay, so yeah, way too aggressive on the on and off the, the yeah. brake. 
Yeah, uh, yeah just gentle modulation mm -hmm. on, the, on the pedal there. Yeah, I think I was sort of coming, trying to come off completely yeah. and then get back on rather than, yeah, as you've mentioned, tried to sort of hold a moderate amount of braking pressure and then just modulate it on and off from there. Yeah, definitely it works better. And you can also see how you could sort of run from like basically the outside of the skid pad to the inside yeah. just by what you're doing with the braking. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like I did in the demo for you. Once you're comfortable with this, you can get to where you can use big inputs and tons of brake, but you just have to really be able to feel very delicately exactly where that sort of sweet spot is and how much pressure you can apply. And it's what we started to do in, in straight line braking was getting really comfortable with that, right? Our yeah. goal is always to find that sort of traction limit as quickly as we can and as aggressively as we can without lockup. So we want to make sure that we're we're transitioning weight instead of just squeezing the pedal. Because sure. if you don't transition the weight forward, you'll just lock up the you know hydraulic system and the crown just slides. So um, yeah, that was much better obviously on that pass as you start to get comfortable modulating the brakes more gently. It's especially as you get into the figure eight and the slalom. The, the smoother the better and just gentle application of brakes. Again, when you're, especially in the slalom and in the figure eight, you're mostly using the brakes to rotate the car more so than scrubbing speed. Sure. So instead of, you know, in a road course where you're on the gas, on the gas, on the gas, and then hard, heavy braking, you're using that brake pedal just as a tool to assist with rotating the car. Okay. So, same thing. All right, one more let's go. Do, uh, let's do one more go at it. All right, three laps. First lap, midline. We're gonna stay right in the middle of the track. Nice and tidy, eyes up over the mirror. Steady wheel, steady foot, nice and steady. Okay, one lap down. Next lap, we're gonna squeeze brakes in, we're gonna hold the inside line. So squeeze more brakes, steady throttle, steady throttle, good, nice and tidy on the inside. Good, just hold that inside, eyes up over that mirror all the way ahead. As we come out here, feet off the brakes, and push it towards the outside. Keep that steering steady, off the brakes, let it run outside, good, nice work. Hands are steady, and now just modulate that brake and hold on the outside line, perfect. Nice towards the outside, keep it nice and far outside. That's it, three laps. You got it. All right, whenever you're ready, off the brakes, accelerate that way again, and we'll do it more. And over the crest, flat out like a proper rally driver now. Look at the speed. All right, that felt like I had actual control there. When you wanted the midline, I could hold a midline. Yep. Inside line, I could get to the inside line and then the outside, so that was yeah, it. I think it all sort of clicked there. That's what we want. Perfect. Oh, well, let's head back and have a debrief, eh? Cheers to that. I saw a real progression there, that first lap was definitely not great, I had a real struggle getting my head around modulating that brake pedal, I was coming off the brake and getting back on it which she picked up on and gave me some instruction, also not looking in the right place and then hands weren't in the right spot. But over the second session it started to click, the third session which is only three laps per session uh, you were telling me where to put the car and by modulating that brake pedal we could be right on the inside line, the middle or the outside so it all started to, to sort of fall into place. So in terms of using that technique in the next session, sort of how, how do we play out with the, the left foot braking and the steering as we progress? Yeah, so again, in the skid pad, you know, the goal is to be able to just move the car with the brakes. Like you said, first session was tough, second was better. By the third one, you really had that dialed. So now we're going to take that, split that skid pad in half, and we're going to add a weight transition in that figure eight. The big things to look for moving forward, the takeaway from this is, again, not that you're going to drive a rally car with no steering and no throttle modulation. It's just to rely on the braking first using the steering wheel to suggest where you'd like to go and then really focusing on moving the weight around with the brake pedal um, so as we move from here again same thing we're gonna try and be really consistent in the corners moving forward just like you were in the skid pad so that's why this is really the most important fundamental is really understanding that modulating the brakes is what's gonna move the car always in a rally car I think the other thing that's important for our viewers to to just bring in here you, you see this to us off camera uh, this visually looks like a really boring exercise if you're watching from outside the car, but uh, really important. Yeah, these guys hopefully are going to make it look cool, but usually when we have classes, we just sort of uh, hide your cell phone for this. People are like, they get out of the car and they're like, I'm a golden god, I'm a warrior of driving. And then they watch and they're like, he's just going in, in circles in a Honda Civic. So, um, I, I think it's important to mention there, you, you don't get the perspective of when the car, like the car has to just about be facing backwards before it visually looks yeah, like yeah. it's really sideways. So totally. I've, I felt in that third session basically Sebastian Ogier right up in here. 
yeah, it was good. I think your French accent needs some work, but uh, as always, the feeling was good for me in the passenger side. I can read for you pace note. It's left three forever. He's really <laughs> only note you need. Very easy so, for this co driver. Yeah, no, it's not a lot of work. No, I mean, it, it's. It really, in the car, it's you can feel what's happening. And what you're doing is essentially you're neutralizing that understeer. So the front of the car pushing forward, that's that understeer that we're trying to eliminate by using left foot to sort of bring it back in. And then we can scrub that even further by by adding a ton of brake and bringing it in. So instead of getting it into an oversteer, which is what you're going to get in the next exercise, you'll feel by adding brake, it'll get the back to rotate. And instead of having that understeer where the front pushes, we're able to put the car in that neutral state. So... Anybody who knows anything about race car dynamics knows that having a front wheel drive car on street tires on a dirt track going in a circle, uh, it's not exactly a condition that you would expect the car to handle neutral. Um, and so for you to be able to get it there, not only keep the car in that space, but also move it around on the track sort of on demand, that's that sweet spot that we're looking for. All right, well, I think I've got my head around that lesson. We're ready to move on. And for you watching at home, if you're interested in learning more about rally driving, continue watching these lessons. We've got another two coming up. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.